A body plesmiograph can be used to measure both airway resistance and absolute lung volumes. Let's perform a complete body measurement and see what the graphic presentation shows. The measurement starts with quiet breathing. During this phase, specific airway resistance is measured. After a stable breathing level is achieved, a shutter will be closed to determine thoracic gas volume. As soon as the shutter opens, a vital capacity is performed in order to calculate the absolute lung volumes. It is well known that there is a relationship between airway resistance and lung volumes. However, none of the charts that are currently available embrace both airway resistance and lung volume. That's why Sentry Suite is offering you the resistance volume chart, a presentation of the instantaneous relationship between airway resistance and lung volume across the entire breathing cycle. There's no need to change your measurement routine. The resistance volume chart is automatically created after the body measurement. A horizontal dashed line displays the effect of airway resistance. The vertical dashed lines displays the breathing level at which the measurement has been performed. For a quick orientation, the predicted area of the resistance volume loop is shown in the chart. In this example, airway resistance, the surface of the resistance volume loop, and the breathing level are normal. As we mentioned before, there is a relationship between volume and airway resistance. When you increase your breathing level towards total lung capacity, the airway resistance will decrease. Let's assume that we have performed a body measurement on a very high breathing level, near to total lung capacity. When we look at the resistance volume chart, all information is plotted in one graph. You can immediately see that the breathing level has shifted towards total lung capacity. Airway resistance is almost the same, but the surface of the resistance volume loop has significantly decreased. The opposite will happen when you are breathing in the direction of residual volume, resulting in an increase of airway resistance. Let's assume that we are breathing at a very low breathing level, near residual volume. When we look at the resistance volume chart, we can immediately see that the surface of the resistance volume loop has increased enormously. The airway resistance has also increased. And it is clear that the measurement was performed at very low breathing level. When we compare the resistance volume loops of the three different breathing levels, we can see that this has the same pattern as shown in this graph. Resistance volume chart. What is the clinical use of it? When we look at the resistance volume chart in terms of physiology of the respiratory system, we can state the following. Airway resistance, which is shown on the y-axis, is representative of the central components, the large airways, in the respiratory tract. The measured lung volumes shown on the x-axis are exclusively dependent on the peripheral characteristics of the respiratory tract. Knowing this, we can say that the resistance volume graph can provide more detailed information in relation to the distribution of the patient's disease across the entire respiratory system. When a patient has an elevated degree of hyperinflation, resulting in them breathing on a higher FRC level, the resistance volume loop will shift to the left. If the airway's obstruction of the patient has increased, the resistance volume loop will move upwards. In the case of restrictive lung diseases, the resistance volume loop shifts to the right, caused by a reduction of lung volume. Of course, a combination of the different impairments is also possible. The resistance volume graph is particularly informative, documenting the differentiated and diverse pre-post bronchodilator response. When we look at the standard graphical display, it is hard to determine the degree of change in airways resistance and lung volumes after medication. Using the resistance volume graph instead, you can clearly see that the airways resistance after medication has decreased into the normal range. In addition to this, the patient also benefits from a decrease of hyperinflation. 
This is shown by a reduction of residual volume and the fact that the FRC touches the normal range. The last feature we want to point out is the bar diagram to the right of the resistance volume graph, which illustrates the variability of airway's resistance during tidal breathing. A higher degree of obstruction is usually associated with a greater variance of airway's resistance within a breath and therefore documented by a longer bar diagram. Generally, we can say that the resistance volume graph can be considered a clinically oriented and simplified summary of the whole body plethysmography measurement results in one graph. Furthermore, it illustrates the direct relationship between the airway resistance and lung volume. For more information, we refer to the white paper titled Resistance Volume Graph in Whole Body Plethysmography.